introduce like what happened in 2016 and early this year legal reforms then you are putting the electoral commission in a very difficult situation so challenging because remember there are legal timelines to be met and those are big challenges because if you miss legal timelines then it means we could even end up in a constitutional crisis so i think in an election year we should agree as a country we cannot and should not afford or have the time to do any such reforms that would impact on the work of the commission that right there is Lillian Mahiri Zajo. She's the former vice chair of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission that was bundled out um, following protests at the time by CORD. And then there was a joint parliamentary select committee process that then led to the commission uh, and the commissioners that we have at this point, speaking about uh, making amendments to the law so close to the polls. Still on the big story with me tonight is Otiende Amolo, who's a member of National Assembly. Um, so just before the break, you said uh, that these uh, laws will be declared uh, unconstitutional if they are passed. So what is NASA's game plan um, regarding these amendments? Because NASA will not be part of the ad hoc committee. NASA um, is not happy with the talks IBC BOMAS citing, of course, these amendments that have been tabled. So what's the game plan? Yvonne, um, NASA's position is this. We have said this and we said this before 8th of August. We've said it after 8th of August, uh, that there are certain things that need to be done to levelize the playing field and to make sure that if we have the fresh presidential election, it will not be bungled up against, it will not be nullified by the court. Instead of focusing on what needs to be done, the IPC has turned a deaf ear. The Jubilee has been cheering the IBC in ignoring those concerns. But now, the Jubilee Party has complicated the situation much more. They've made an already bad situation worse by now purporting to bring amendments that make it not only more difficult for the IBC to address the issues we've been raising, it actually makes it impossible for IBC to conduct those elections, and that can be demonstrated. How? Yeah. First of all, mm -hmm. the, IB, uh, the amendments purport to do away with the entire edifice of what we call the IT infrastructure in, vote, uh, in voter identification, voter transmission, and the, you know, in, in terms of even display. They are going back to what you'd call manual. Now, the infrastructure of elections law in this country right now is not based on what you are calling a manual. Even voter identification is not manual. When you go there, you must be electronically identified. No one uses their uh, voter, uh, you know, voting card anymore for identification. So right from the identification to transmission, largely the elections law and election system in this country is electronic. To come and say that there's a manual system and an electronic system, and if the electronic one fails, then you rely on the manual, uh -huh. is to make it impossible to conduct those elections by IPC. Okay, um, I'd like us to listen to Senator Kipchumba Murkomen because I think he may disagree with you. Um, he talks about these amendments sealing some of the loopholes um, w with our elections. Listen. And I want to make it clear that that bill does not in any way alter the electronic transmission of results. It will go on as it was. It does not alter the manual transmission of results, which also happened, it will go on. It actually recognizes that complementary system in law. Number three, it does not threaten in any way the powers and the functioning of the chairman and the members of IBC com uh, commission. To the contrary, it fills the vacuum. If anything happens uh, when elections are going on, it makes it sanctionally clear that the commission will still continue functioning and there will be no vacuum. There will be no crisis in the country if any commissioner was to decide to respond. Your thoughts? Respect uh, Senator Murkomen, and I have no idea why he would seek to mislead the public. Anybody who is able to access that bill will see that in section 3, subsection 1, from 1D, this is what they seek to introduce. In 1D, they say that if there's a discrepancy between the results transmitted manually 
and electronically, the manual transmission will prevail. In 1E, they say that failure to transmit or publish the, res the results shall not invalidate the results. Meaning, even if you don't transmit, even if you don't publish, it is irrelevant. But lastly, then they say that the transmission to the public portal, which is to be displayed to the public, is for purposes of public information only and is not to be relied on in announcing the result. What does all that mean? You don't have to do anything electronically. You don't have to tally anything. You don't have to send accurate results. You don't have to display, because even if you display, it is only for general public consumption. Essentially, they are saying that you can do away with the electronic transmission, tallying, display, and it will not invalidate the results. And therefore, the question would be asked, why would Kenyan spend in excess of $2 billion in the ICT infrastructure if it is irrelevant, if it is academic, if it will not help in announcement of the final results? So Senator Kipchumba Murkomen is misleading the public. So then let's start to talk about um, if this bill passes and goes through. What will NASA's recourse be? I know we've heard um, the calls that there will be no election, and I think we heard that from the representatives of NASA um, after leaving BOMAS when uh, the talks uh, were adjourned yet again with no agreement. I believe we heard that from Norman Magaya, who talked about the fact that there will be no elections if these uh, amendments uh, go through. I know you get asked this question all the time, but Kenyans would like to know what would... NASA do if the bills, uh, if the amendments actually go through, and what does no election really mean? Uh, Yvonne, NASA's position has always been that there are certain fundamental things that needed to be done to ensure that the IBC can comply with the decision of the Supreme Court. That decision required and identified the things that needed to be done, and the administrative. Our position has always been that unless the IBC is, is, IBC is able to address those issues, then there will be no election in this country. What Jubilee is now doing is not only making it difficult for IBC to comply with those requirements of the Supreme Court, they are making it impossible for the IBC to conduct the elections. There is one folly in that line. The Jubilee team is wrongly assuming that by amending the elections law right now, when the game is halfway, that, that then the amended law is what the IBC must use in the fresh presidential election. Unfortunately, it cannot be. It must be remembered that this is a fresh presidential election, but it's an, an election in the sense of uh, a receipt. It is a replay. It's like a game that was played, but it has to be replayed afresh. What it means, therefore, that the IBC must comply with the orders of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court required the IBC to look at the Constitution, to look at the election laws, and to look at the regulation, as they were on 8th of August. That is why even the candidates are restricted to only two. IBC will not and cannot look at the amended laws because those are not the instructions of the Supreme Court. So what the Jubilee team is doing is to put IBC in an impossible situation. You are subject to the decision of the Supreme Court asking you to respect the law as it was as of 8th of August. The National Assembly then comes in and purports to change that law and requires you to do something else. And yet the Supreme Court was very clear that uh -huh. if you do not respect what we have indicated, then we will nullify that election. Where okay. does that leave IBC? In a situation that it is virtually impossible. So, uh -huh. as NASA, our resolve was that we will not go for elections unless those administrative issues were addressed. Mm -hmm. When Let's... this bill comes in, uh -huh. then it strengthens our position. We will definitely ensure that there are no elections in this jumbled up Position. All right, I want us to listen to Senator James Orengo, who was very categorical about uh, Jubilee incurring the wrath of Kenyans if these amendments go through. And if they want to test the resilience of the Kenyan people in resisting 
autocracy, despotism, and authoritarian rule, uh, then from now, from this moment, they'll begin to feel the wrath of the people of, the, of this country. Okay, so again, if we do not have, um, you know, an election and uh, we hear those words from uh, Senator James Orengo that, you know, we will incur the wrath of the people of this country, would that not leave us in a constitutional limbo? Um, no elections beyond the 60 days that is prescribed under law. What then? What would be the situation pertaining in the country legally? I think you heard from uh, uh, Madam Lillian, um, whose clip you played, that amending laws at this stage might result in a constitutional crisis. I agree with her, but let me say that already in the situation in which we were, in which we are, there's a danger of a constitutional crisis. With the introduction of these so-called amendments by the Jubilee team, we are now facing a constitutional quagmire. Where that leaves us is our position is all these purported amendments, and they, are, they have ill motives, must be abandoned. We must all focus on how the IEBC can deliver free and fair and credible presidential elections within the framework of what was addressed by the Supreme Court. And one question must be asked. I was looking and listening to Honorable Dwale saying how they must amend these things and, uh, you know, to, to address all sorts of issues. And I asked myself, because the Jubilee team is so clear that they won the last election, what is their fear in going for a repeat election with the, the same set of laws that they are saying they used to win? What would be the legitimate fear? Obviously none, unless there's an inherent admission there was, that there was some things or something in those laws which made them win and which, if left as it is, on a level playing ground, then we'll disable them from winning. That is the All only right. logical oh, conclusion. Okay, yeah, but um, you know, once we get to that point, and uh, let's say the laws have been passed, um, Senator Orengo is saying, will incur the wrath of Kenyans. What does this mean? Would you seek ways to um, you know, make sure that that bill is not signed into law? Would you be going to court? Would you be going back to the streets? Well, uh, first of all, it's not a question of going back to the streets. I think you had the, uh, the NASA principles. They had already declared that uh, NASA will be holding lawful, peaceful demonstrations every Monday and every Friday until all the issues that it has put on the table are addressed. And that, in this case, will include withdrawal of these very offensive uh, amendments. Secondly, going to court is not a preserve for NASA. And I really want to urge all of us to stop looking at election as a jubilee versus NASA affair. Election is for all the Kenyans. I think we all have an interest in having peaceful but credible, fresh presidential elections. Anybody who stands in the way of the credibility of that election then should be the person answering, not the ones who are insisting on what makes it credible. And therefore, any Kenyan, and I foresee and I can predict that the path we are going to walk is that Jubilee will fast track this legislation as they are trying to do. In a short while, they'll use the numbers without reason to pass it. Before then or after that, some good-minded constitution-fearing Kenyan will go to court. The court will nullify this, and IBC will be left in a position where it was preparing using the old regime, asked to change to this called new regime, then asked to go back to the old regime. What does that all mean? It will be impossible to hold the elections within the 60 days. All right. What is the way forward? Um, what do you see it as? And, and before I get to that, I'd just like to uh, have us listen to Senator Kipchumba Murkom and once again who says um, they're ready for any eventuality and all possible scenarios. We are properly prepared as Jubilee for even a situation where they will not participate in the elections or where they will want to cause violence so that the election cannot take place or where they want to go to court to stop the elections from taking place. We are prepared for all the scenarios. So 
everybody is prepared for all scenarios. That is what uh, Senator Murkoman is saying. You are saying pretty much the same thing. Um, my last question to you, Otiende, is where do we go from here? What would it take to have NASA get back to the table with IEBC? What would be your requirements? Um, where do we go from here? Because we seemingly are uh, in a stalemate at the moment over this issue. We, uh, thank you, Yvonne. We are in a stalemate, but it is not fair to ask and answer that question. I think before yesterday, you remember that the uh, pressure was always on NASA to attend the meeting convened by IEBC. The NASA team then goes to IBC, and who behold, they discover that there's a bill that affects those very talks. How do you go to a negotiating table when the issues to be negotiated are being adjusted elsewhere? And in today's meeting, the jingoistic attitude of Jubilee was displayed. In that meeting, they said that the IBC must concern itself with the issues it's discussing at BOMAS, the amendments are the sole preserve of parliament, and the IBC team has no business bringing them on the table. That is absolute jingoism. This country is for all of us. It does not mean that if at any one time you have a slight or a major majority either in parliament or the Senate, then you can rub roughshod over the rest of us. You cannot. Because even parliament exercises only delegated powers. Those powers are delegated from the people under Article 1. And if any institution that is exercising delegated power then becomes so jingoistic, so big-headed, that it thinks that whatever its wishes must carry the day, then we must resort to the original power, and that is the sovereignty of the people. And that sovereignty is lawfully exercised under Article 37 in demonstrations, in petitions, in picketing, and in challenges of that act or laws in a court of law. All right, thank you very much for that. Otiende Amolo, we thank you for your time on the big story tonight. We wait to see how this develops in the coming days. He's the member of parliament representing the people of Rarieda. We thank you for your time on the big story and also uh, our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, and her conversation a little earlier with the majority leader in the National Assembly, Honorable Adan Duwale. This